Last time on Sherlock Holmes, Chapter One. Very well. Do you mind if I ask you more questions? If I find anything that might help. Anything to catch that monster. It's not a monster. Who's a cute bird? <gasps> oh. Oh. It's a parrot or a macaw. You're not a dictionary reader, at least. I wanted to see how you. Pals interact with oh. each other in your natural habitat. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! But I'm afraid I have to interfere. Oh boy! Hello, everyone. This is the Game and Pub here, and today I am back for part six of Sherlock Holmes, chapter one. So it's been a little bit since the last episode. And last time, we met Imogen, the daughter of Theodore Gildon, the man who was killed in, the, in our most recent case. And we're, we also met uh, Paul, or who actually turned out to be a woman who is in love with Imogen and is Imogen's partner. And we had to do a bit of fighting, which didn't really exactly go well last time. But it's out of the way. We're heading straight into this. Ooh. Are you lost, sir? Not at all. I'm right where I need to be. I'm Sherlock Holmes, by the way. Ursula Oni, the chief archivist. How can I help you exactly? I need to take a look at the history of Cordona and its islanders to retrieve some, hopefully, useful information. Your brother Mycroft told me that you were direct, and now that we've met, I can see that is true. Mm. Someone in our family has to balance the evasive nature of my brother. Well, may I use the city archives? You may, of course. But in return, perhaps dinner? That's a high price to pay for looking at your archives. <laughs> I was teasing you. Pay no attention to me. Okay, then. Okay, where are the archives? Well, for one, let me get this off. Okay. So we're now in the city hall, which we've never been in here before, so this is a first. Thomas Norton, chief archivist. It's definitely not where we go. Okay. Where exactly do we go? I'm assuming over here. Archive. There we go. Okay. Oh, and we just saw John appear. As he does. Okay, so we're looking for ivory baths. So, I would assume a business. Um. Hmm. Registry, nothing within the period. But we'll look for information on this. So, so registry, probably legal documents. That would make sense to me. The old city? I think so. That's correct. Ah, there we go. Registration of Gildan and Swift, LTD. Notice of registration by authority of the government of Cordona. This deed registers the creation of Gildan and Swift, LTD, on this, the 21st day of June, 1877. Theodore Gildan is the sole proprietor and founder of the above enterprise and shall provide finances and the land known as the Roman outskirts. Arthur Swift is a founding partner and shall provide finances and his services as archaeologist. The primary purpose of the enterprise is to perform archaeological research in the ruins located at the intersection of Bazaar Road and Arnott Street beyond the fortification walls in Old City Cordona. The sole proprietor, undersigned hereby, agrees to fund archaeological research in exchange for ownership of any uncovered items of historical value. The founding partner undersigned hereby waives all finders' rights and ownership of items uncovered in the archaeological dig in exchange for the exclusive right to publication of all academic findings thereof. Signed, Mr. Theodore Gilden and Mr. Arthur Swift. Okay. Okay. So, Bizarre Road and Arnott Street. 
With your love for archives, you would have made the perfect bureaucrat. Mm. I'll be right here. Okay, well... I just want to see if there's, like, anything else maybe in here. I doubt it, though. Of course there isn't. Okay. We do got something in our case book. So, let's see. Bizarre Road in Arnott Street. Bizarre Road, Arnott Street. Bizarre Road, Arnott Street. Silent Way, no. Hey, Ripper Street. <laughs> okay. Bizarre Road, Arnott Street. It's at an intersection. Hmm. Arsenal Street, that's not it. Bizarre Road, Arnott Street. Where would this be? Bizarre Road. Okay, I see Bizarre Road. Arnott Street. So we gotta place our marker right there. Wow. We got a long way to go. So I, there's definitely going to be a cut. I'm just gonna say that. There's gonna be a, a massive cut in this video. Cause it's gonna take me a while to get there. All right. Well, let's go then. Let's, let's go on our way and continue this case of a gilded cage. Okay, so which way do we want to go? Straight and then down there? Or do we want to... Hmm. I'll take the long way. You know what? I find I might find some more uh, fast travel points and whatnot. Why did my controller stop for a moment? Okay, that was odd. That was very odd. All right, let's go. Oh wow! Just look at this. Oh, you got cattle. Okay, this is a complete. This absolutely is a completely new area. Old City Market. Ooh. Okay, then this is a real Market different Square. area. Beating heart of the old city. Yep. I wonder if they still sell that heavy Turkish delight around the corner. They might. Okay, so we just have to go along this road. Hmm. Okay, so I guess we'll go along this road then. in oriental style oh my rabba it's a good day for a purchase oh stuff from our home how much we got we can we can buy it you know what we'll buy it may your purchase bring you joy salty breeze old ruins dusty roads you recall clambering over these walls as a child? Perhaps. Did we find something at the top? A mad rogue. What is this case? These walls hold a lot of secrets, including one of ours. John gave me a hint at how to recall what happened here, and I can't ignore it. The memory began in Old City when we walked along Bizarre Road, past the ruins of the Fortress of Holy Spirit. Back then, we found something, and John claimed to have a plan for it. Ooh. Let's do this, then, actually, while we're at it. Perfect for climbing. Hey, it was an old skull. What a lucky find for a pair of young adventurers. It was easier to climb these walls back then. Not merely because we're older, but because the ruins are, too. Of course. You said we needed to bury him. Do you remember where? Oh, 
one would think burying a human skull would stick in the mind, but somehow... No. Hmm. Oh. What do we got here? Shocked and afraid. The man was standing here as we passed. Oh yes, I remember his face as we flew by with a skull in our hands. He looked as shocked as our grisly companion. Hmm. Oh, here we go. What do we got here? We ran past surprise Nothing locals. ever bothers an old Ottoman backgammon player. Hmm. Okay, so we went down this way. This is interesting, how we're doing a side mission. I mean, I don't mind doing side missions. I actually enjoy it. But... You know, it's nice. It's nice to be doing something like this. Inappropriate burial this site. This wasn't the right place for a funeral. We were looking for somewhere more appropriate. Funny. Nowadays you love putting men behind bars. Mm. You're a fellow of infinite jest, aren't you? <laughs> okay, so we went down this way. Water has dried the water up. The level was higher back then. Oh. I remember swimming through this mire while trying not to breathe in the horrible odor. The heck are you? Oh, Jesus, John. Right over here. Perfect burial spot. This is where we buried it. It seems that with time, our friend has emerged once more. Has he? Oh, he has. The skull is ancient. Its likeliest owner was one of the Knights Hospitaller who died during the Whoa. siege of the fortress. I remember now, you said this skull was my father's. A child's imagination is a powerful tool. You needed this. A burial process of your own. A ritual so you could begin to grieve. Here hung those lips that I have kissed. I know not how oft. <laughs> I felt so alone back then, John. Uncertain. Abandoned by my father. I know. The skull wasn't his, though it may as well have been. Oh. In the earth, all of us look alike. Putting this man to rest, it did help. I'm glad, Sherry. I find myself rather tempted to keep it. If not for sentimental value, then it's archaeological merit. We should then. Oh, mad road complete. Also, we got money for that. How long does it take for a skull to decay? Eh, that's besides uh, the point. What matters is Sherry saying goodbye? When Sherry... Okay, so let's actually suppose Skull is Sidra Holmes. Rodona is the burial ground for many secrets. Sherry and I hid one here too. Oops. Nope, I didn't want to do that. When we were boys, we found a human skull. It was most likely the skull of a night hospitaller that died during the siege of the Fortress of Holy Spirit. But I invented the story that it was actually the skull of Sherlock's father, Sidra Holmes. Mr. Holmes died when Sherlock was six, and three years later, he still hadn't fully processed his father's passing. This small fiction offered my brother Sherry a way, a ritual, to let go of his sorrow. We buried the skull beneath the old city walls. I think it helped. Oh. Alright. Interesting. It's really interesting. A mad rogue. Memory. John and I found the skull a long time ago. It seems most likely to belong to a hospital knight that died in the siege of the fortress of Holy Spirit. Back then, John told me it was father's. I'm still torn apart with sorrow and fear, but he made me believe it so I could start to move on. We buried it in a secluded spot. Well. 
Okay, then. Let's get back on to what we were needing to do. Which was the main quest, but that was a nice little side quest. That was nice. A memory. A nice little memory to add. Okay. So this way. We need to go this way. Okay, let's look at the map. Oh, not that far left. Only a bit away left. Bandit lair? Oh, we are not doing that right now. Absolutely not. I know it would help with me learning how to fight and whatnot, but I don't want to do that. From day to night, Aiden stands there, recruiting non-rebellious workers for the dig. Oh. Learn how to find the recruiter. Oh. No. Hmm. Maybe there, that seems right. I would think pro British. Oh. Entrance to the dig site. I've overheard that in order to enter the dig site, I need to be employed. A man named Aiden recruits new workers in the old city marketplace in the west end of the district. He has a scar on his neck and only looks for working types with a pro British attitude. Hmm. Uh, he eavesdrop, I sit around and wait for him to finish. Never fails. Hmm. Okay, so... Ah, there we go. Dig site. So we need... So there's a, um... Clothing option. Do we have to... We have to find some clothing, don't we? We're gonna have to update our clothing. Okay. Well, then that means we have to go to a trader. And the last one I saw was over here. Okay, let's do a bit of fast traveling. Okay. Cannot be entered by members of the public. Yep. So we need a clothing trader. So we look like someone of the public, as it is right now. Don't miss out on my unique clothes. Let's pick something that suits you. So, what would work? Merchant attire, no. Emerald Ottoman outfit, no. No. I mean, I'm thinking like maybe this. We'll buy it. You know what? We got money for it. A good choice. A good choice indeed. Okay, so we have the clothes. To say, cannot be entered by members of the public. Hmm. Does that mean we have to find like a recruiter somewhere or something? I don't know. Hello, who are you? Sir, kind sir, might I steal your attention? I am not buying. Ah, that is the thing. You won't waste a single mangir. I am oh. a digger, you see? And I have heard of a dig site so deep it clogs your ears. I want to be there. Why are you telling me this? I have heard of a man recruiting for such a dig. A man with a scar, such as uh, the one that you're hiding. And your boots are dirty with the deep clay I am so familiar with. Oh, I hope it wasn't too rude of me to point that out. You have a good eye. And you just want to dig? Dig deep and that's it? What's the catch? Are you in desperate need of money? Oh, there is no, no. catch, sir. I won't even ask for advance pay. Just give me a shovel and I'll dig a hole like you've never seen. Huh. Is that so? Well, I have to ask you an important question first. Would you be fine working for Brits? All for them. I am all for them. Well, you say that, but can you prove it? 
sing the anthem. I love to you, my British breakfast. I'll sing the anthem. I'll sing you a very special song. Oh, God. God save our gracious queen. Cut it. Or people here will make you their queen. I can oh. also speak in limericks. Please don't. <laughs> You might be a little bit weak in the head, but a natural bone digger with a keen eye is what we need. Take this permission slip and go to this address. The guard will let you in and check with the professor once you're there. The professor. Entrance to the dig site. Oh, now we've gained entrance to the dig site. Also, my controller just decided to mess up on me. Aiden gave me permission to enter, which should get me past the guard. Ooh. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I've ordered that or enter the dig site. I need to be employed. A man named Aiden recruits new workers in the old city marketplace in the west end. Yep, okay. Okay, now. Now we can actually go to where we need to go. So let's go do that. Not bad. Okay, and we are now here. Exactly where we need to be. Also, I find it funny that he changed his accent, but that makes sense if he wants to fit in. Stop loitering and get inside. Okay, fine. Don't be so rude. Jeez. Archaeological digging site. Ooh. The dig site is now open to me as long as I remember to play along. Yes. Let's play along, shall we? Hmm. Newcomer, talk to the professor first. He's the old fellow with the glasses and the plans. Okay. I'll go talk with the professor first. Hello. Where's the fire in your eyes? Where's the smile? I am sick and tired of seeing apathy among the new workers. Sir, believe me, I do have the spark. I want to start work straight away. It's as important to me as it is to you. Ah, that's the spirit. Mm. I'm on the verge of a great discovery. Oh, I shouldn't talk about those. Or should we? No, I no, no, work. we're not going to. Splendid. Do you know what I am working on? Archaeological treasure ivory baths. Um, ivory baths are... Archaeological treasure? Archaeological treasure. Ah, uh, you're hoping to find something priceless, something that will change our history. Bravo, young man. I oh. couldn't have said it better myself. It's true. We're looking for Vitus Lemonius's tomb. I'll help you. That is my goal as a worker. Good. Listen to me carefully, then. I hate repeating myself. Okay. I am Professor Swift. We have three rules here. Don't touch anything. Always return the tools. And don't distract me unless you find something. Sounds simple enough. Hmm. Are you the only one in charge here, Mr. Swift? Yes, I am the only one and no one else. You hear anything other than that, it's a lie. People of your kind can have hmm. difficulty understanding who's in charge. Take a minute. What's that supposed to mean? And then get to work. Oh, I will definitely take a closer look to memorize my superior. Observe. Ah, here we go. Here we go. Okay. Broken glasses, inconvenient, but continues to wear. That's a bit of a problem, if you ask me. Thick notebook. Very meticulous. Okay. Interesting. Oh, what's that? Your elbow. What do we got here? Elbow bruises. Fresh and unattended. That seems like a problem, if you ask me. No ring. Unmarried. Okay, so you're not married. I don't know what that detail has to do. Dirty clothes. Indifferent or poor. Hmm. Okay. Either knowledge seeker or money grabber. Arthur Swift is an archaeologist. 
Archaeologists attempting to find the tomb of Vitius Limonius on Cordona he used all of his resources to locate this ancient site, driven by an obsession to expand the knowledge of humankind. He does not care about his appearance nor occasional wounds incurred during research, such as the injured elbow on his left arm. His life is documented in meticulous detail in a diary he treasures. Arthur Swift has sacrificed almost everything he has in a thankless attempt to uncover more about the past. Or is this, um, I don't think that's it. No, I think it's Knowledge Seeker. I think it's a Knowledge Seeker. I wish I could be as passionate about something as you are, Mr. Swift. You value knowledge and dedication over everything else. Mm -hmm. It's a long road, young man. A sharp eye and attention to detail are the only stepping stones along this path. You have to sacrifice everything you love for the larger prize. Exactly. Okay. So much in life is uh, superficial. I wish more people would understand. I never heard a truer word, lad. <laughs> Folk will ignore what truly matters in life and for what? Convenience. Bold words indeed. I doubt that many scientists would be willing to support their bragging with fieldwork. The academic world is full of restrictions. Mm. Our honorable professors are too afraid to dirty their hands. God forbid if they have a stain on their shirt. <laughs> you can follow in my footsteps. You can start learning by returning to work. Show me what you can find. Okay. Oh. Oh. The professor is Arthur Swift. He is looking for the tomb of Vitius Lemonius. And we got some more stuff. I'm not going to do any of this stuff yet. Because I'm going to wait until later. Don't touch anything here. Get back to work. Okay, okay. Now, what do we got here? Straw dolls. Eerie, but effective for a scene recreation. Oh, hmm. I want one of these. Or two. Uh <laughs> Titus and Vitius Conquest. Titus and Vitius Limonius, Vitus Limonius were legendary legates of the early Roman Empire, starting their military career to suppress the riots of the Bellavaci and Albrogs. Uh, they were the key commanders during the siege of Mutina and the Battle of Actium. With the new Emperor Augustus, the brothers received twin swords, presumably the ones previously belonged to Romulus and Remus. Oh, yes, the story of Romulus and Remus, the two twins who had a wolf as a mother. The brothers served as legates to conquer the Dalmatian and African provinces and were famous for their worship of minor gods. Titus honored Eris, while his brother prayed for Zephyrus. Not much is known about the brothers, except for the description by uh, Pliny the Elder. Titus wore the skin of a lion with its head on the helmet, a tradition he picked up while being a signifer. Uh, Vitus held a shield large enough to cover the sky. Though the exact locations of the tombs remain unknown, historians know that Titus died in the spring of 10 AD while Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. <laughs> Interesting. Had no idea. Absolutely had no idea. Okay, what else? Oh, here we go. Oil cloth. Won't fade and waterproof. Enough here to make ten sails and more. Hmm. Okay. Hello. Oh, we can look at this as well. Ooh. This reminds me of my father's room. Oh. Okay. We got some interesting things to look at. And then I see this as well. Titus Lemonius's tomb has been found. Near the city of Corinth, British archaeologist Sir George Griffiths has discovered the well-preserved tomb of a Roman legate, General Edi Titus Lemonius, owner of the legendary twin sword of Romulus, gifted by Augustus himself, first emperor of the Roman Empire. Uh, in an exclusive interview, Sir George has described the find as a priceless addition to the history of humankind. The entrance was found by the removal 
of several blocks of soil around prominent statues revealing the tomb. According to Sir George, the statues represent the life of Titus, a female statue, presumably a mother, holding a basket of fruits, looks to the west. Another female figure, perhaps Autumn, with a sickle in her hand, looks to the east. Sir George presumes that these statues are hidden allegories of Zephyrus, a minor god of the west wind, and the other, Eris, god of the east wind. All this being played in a circle with the statues of the two brothers, Titus and Vitus. The achievements of the archaeologists have been acknowledged by the crown. This might prove useful. I'll note it down. Hmm. Okay. Oh, what do we call? Ah, yes, the two documents that we just got. Okay. There are four statues near the tomb. He, re he researched a female statue, an allegory of a minor wind god Zephyrus, looking west with a basket of fruits in her hand, looking east was another female statue, also an allegory of a wind god Eris with a sickle, the archetypal symbol of autumn in her hand. Between those two were the remains of statues of Titus and his brother Phidus. Like its appearance as depicted in historical records, Titus wore a lion helmet and fought with a sword, while Vitus carried both a sword and a shield. Titus died in the spring of 10 AD and Vitus in the autumn of 12 AD. I feel like that's going to be a puzzle. Found two articles, one about the brothers' lives and the other about the tomb of Titus, which featured statues. I have a feeling that this is going to have something to do with like a Puzzle. I just have a feeling. Okay. Let's see, what do we got down here? Ooh. Anything? Anything of interest? I do see other tents. So, I mean... Swift lost his temper when he learned what happened to the statue. Oh. I'm not doing that right now. That's an eavesdrop thing. I don't want to do that right now. I want to explore for more. I just, I just want to explore. Ooh, what do we got here? Oh! Sharpest pickaxe. <laughs> A guilty pleasure of the real archaeologist. Missing your Laura, Mr. Swift? Hey, a word about the trilogy. Right then, you literary expert. What you about know it? What's so important about these books? Or do, do you simply need some kindling? <laughs> it's inspirational. I have a plan. Are you listening? I wish I wasn't, but I am. Uh. So, we catch a monkey, a langur, for example, then we extract some blood from it. What? Why? Why? It will make us forever young, Sherry. Page 127 of the second book. Oh, what? I'm so done with this. Oh, Jesus. No, wait. Then how about we make a wax statue? I've stopped listening, John. <laughs> Everyone's a critic. And we won the challenge. A monumental work deserves to be found and preserved. Perhaps one day Sherry will discover its brilliance and be forced to uh, eat crow. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. Well, we found the last book. Wallace D. Aram concludes a phenomenal trilogy, one of the successful adventures of the most crucial couple in the history of archaeology, Nabe and Laura. Nabe and Laura's actions have caused the Earth to split in two. The hostile environment is now full of unknown creatures, flying apes, pre-turtles that carried the world, and flying dinosaurs. To prevent the end of the world, Nabe and Laura have had to combine their scientific knowledge and develop an ingenious solution. Sir Dredd has yet to be killed, and it is only a matter of time before he returns in wrath with ancient knowledge and change in time. Will our characters survive the past, present, and future? The chances are doubtful, but if you buy this book, the chances will increase. Mmm. John Shell, I found the dramatic conclusion to this insipid trilogy. Somehow, Arthur is also an avid fan of the series, or perhaps one of his employees attempted to uh, besmirch his reputation as a scholar of note. I've located all of the books. On the one hand, I understand the desire to romanticize a dull profession into something adventurous. On the other, I think we are due another bonfire of the vanities. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, I think now we can actually do- we should do the eavesdrop. Did the Romans live in amphoras? I see nothing else here. John, you are just a mess. You are a mess, John. Swift lost his temper. 
quite daunting to see how deep the dig is. Hmm. Which statue was damaged? Ooh. Okay. No. No. Probably that. No. No. That seems... Probably close to... Oh, there we go. Arthur Swift's research. Workers at the dig site found a statue with a lion helmet head. It originally lay on the pedestal closest to the beach, but someone kicked it over at the edge. As a result, the statue broke and the pedestal remains tilted. Ah. Also, I, I need to get rid of that. Oh. Arthur Swift's research. Workers... Remains tilted. Hmm. Sherry's is adept at getting the truth, even when people won't talk. And nature could not have done better, though may have looked cooler. Oh yeah, you've already said that, mate. You've already said that. Okay. Is there like maybe potentially stuff over here? Most likely is. I'm gonna go talk to the prof professor because. I mean, I have found out information, so, you know, it's a matter of... We might as well talk to the professor now. Take a shovel and dig. Oh. Okay. Maybe we don't talk to him. <laughs> Let's go down the beach, then. Or up there. No, oh, maybe, you know what? Actually, let's go down on the beach. Let's just... Ah, ah, oh. John does or not John. Sherlock doesn't like this. Oh, maybe not down here. Oh, hello. Working and living by the sea. What a dream. Is it a dream? Surely there's something over here. Unless there isn't, in which case that might actually be the case. Oh, hello. Okay, maybe we do just go up. That's fine with me. Very much fine with me. Ooh, look at the statue. Nice. I like it. Okay. What do we got here? Somehow the text remains legible. Oh. Let's see if I remember my lesson. Oh boy. Investigating the runes. An inscription near the four pedestal translates to Vitus rests nearby. Beware the one who wishes to disrupt his sleep, for he is guarded by the gazes of his brother and the autumn wind. Oh. Okay. Oh. Oh no. This statue is on the ground. A sickle for harvesting. The ancient Romans honored the seasons. Yes, they did. I remember Robert's learning about that. A mother. Someone's wife. Oh. Well, um, no. Do we go over here, maybe? What do we do? What else? Ah, this. There were four statues here originally. Oh. I wonder what the three other statues look like. I see now. Mr. Swift didn't realize the significance of the statues. Oh. Okay, I see. The statue with a lion helmet head originally lay on the head. It's so close to the beach, but someone kicked it over the edge as a result of the statue. Yes, it remained tilted. Oh, I see. Okay, so... So, where is it? Um... Four statue, a female statue. Fucking west. 
Okay, so I gotta do a reconstruction. Figure this out. I mean, it seems simple. Would it be something like this? I mean, that seems... A s it seems everything's in place. Now, let's see what this has to tell us. Oh. Did we do it? Oh. Short summary of author's first findings. We got... The scene recreated I should see if the location of the tomb becomes clear. Oh, should we? Do we have to go talk to him or something? What do we do? <laughs> what do we do? Oh. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, we're already here. Oh. Do we have to go talk to him? Take a shovel and dig. No, I'm wrong. I'm truly thinking like down here somewhere, you know? Like this is where I'm thinking. Oh, wait a minute. What is this? This is this is highlighted. This is different here is your discovery mr. Swift hey look at this what have you found don't let anyone touch anything there Eureka I found you my friend must get in the ruins oh they found oh Oh, this is how we can actually look at his desk. Oh. I found the tomb of Swift is engrossed in the discovery. I can use this opportunity to investigate his workbench. Yes, that's exactly where my mind was going. Ah, I see now. Okay. There's a book. There's an elephant. Tusks and Trunks. The zoological bestseller Tusks and Trunks provides the most rigorous scientific description of the elephant. It is almost encyclopedic in its analysis of the creature's life, both in the wild and captivity. One crucial chapter describes the elephant's mating season, in which they become extremely dangerous. Furthermore, the book features guidance on how to communicate and interact with the big mammal. Oh. Oh. What do we got here? Oh, his diary. Letter notebook. A personal diary owned by Arthur Swift. He describes in considerable detail his personal life and research. More importantly, it tells of a dispute between the archaeologists and Theodore Gilden over the dig site. Day 1224. Theodore always uses his wealth to shut down complaints. I'd rather he bought a brain with more, uh, jurification so that he... He were smart enough to see the bigger picture. Not everything revolves around your darn elephant. I have only a few months before he will commence construction. He even lacks the imagination to build something beautiful. Ivory baths. The mundanity. I must think, lest our invaluable history be buried by the inconsequential. Oh. Any letters by chance? Darts. He also has darts. Lots of darts. Handy against rodents of all kinds. Oh. Trying to take over my research, are you? No. I come here to pick up my diary, and I find you snooping around. Oh no. Explain yourself. Mr. Swift, if that were true, I would have been on my way to the newspaper. <laughs> my name is Sherlock Holmes. I didn't have a chance to introduce myself properly. Mm -hmm. Out. Outrageous! You deceived me, sir! What is the reason for your being here? Who sent you, Mr. Holmes? Theodore Gildon's premature death brought me here. Yep. Theodore? Is dead? How can that be possible? 
I'm thinking of all the possibilities, and I'm not crossing out anyone who might have been involved. Mm -hmm. Even his elephant. The land you're excavating belongs to Mr. Gildon, does it not? Did I hear an accusation? Yes. I have nothing to hide. You can ask me whatever nonsense you've prepared as a token of my diminishing respect towards you. Very well, Mr. Swift. Ah. I appreciate your cooperation. Last contact with when Mr. Was the last Gildan. last time you saw Mr. Gildan? A couple of days ago. Okay. We discussed the site. I believe in the tomb and its secrets. Theodore's patience was stretched, however. He was already inventing new projects. It wasn't a long conversation. I suppose that his daughter will inherit everything now, along with all of the eccentricities and problems. Oh, boy. And not forgetting Goliath. Eccentricities and problems, Mr. Holmes. Mm. One of many. Where were you this morning? Were you at the site this morning? Affirmative. This project is taking a lot of my time, as you see. I spend more time underground than on the surface. When did you learn about Theodore's death? Just now. Yep. You just told me. And you aren't surprised, shocked. I won't tell anyone if you shed a tear or two. Weren't you partners, after all? We were. And it is a real shame. But I've seen too many deaths in my life, Mr. Holmes, for the news to truly shake me. Will you allow me mm. to return to my research? Or are you insisting on remaining an obstacle? Oh, I haven't even started yet. Oh, boy. Okay, let's provide some evidence. What about the box of darts? What's with this box of darts? Is it for a scientific argument? A little darker than that. Oh. Rather for killing the kind of rodents that might nibble a nose or a toe in your sleep. Let's just say I have to okay. protect myself against a larger animal, such as an elephant. Might it be enough to stop it, make it faint? If I were you, I wouldn't bank on it. He claims the darts are used to kill rodents at the dig site. I'll believe him on you that have a one. You for nostalgia. Or rather, do you use it to record a list of enemies? Young man, you need to check your moral compass. Um. Reading another person's diary is a sin in every culture that I can think of. But you aren't answering the question. You've already read it. Why bother? I simply record my life to keep my memory clean from misinterpretation. Letters and pages don't lie. But the writer of the text can. Yeah, exactly. There we go. Arthur Swift uses his diary to document important moments. What about the Tusks and Trunks book? With this book, you attempted to plan an attack on the elephant? Your insinuations are out of place. Goliath is a frightening animal. All I wished to do is was to understand so? the creature. As any scientist would do, I researched, analyzed, and drew conclusions. Hmm. And what conclusion hmm. did you draw? That Theodore Gildon made the animal miserable. He couldn't provide the proper environment for the beast. My interest in the subject ended there. I mean, I actually will agree with that. An animal being in a cage? An animal like that, especially, does not belong in a cage. Arthur Swift only read the book to understand the animal and how it should be treated. Okay. What about this? This is... This... This... <laughs> This intrigued me. As far as I can tell, you're a man of the academic world, so this book about Nabe and Laura is just an empirical study? What? That nonsense? I prefer to lose my eyesight than read such trash. So, you know nothing about it? I know nothing. I wish I'd never heard of it in the first place. This caricature of science. Do I hear traces of envy? Oh. You're still relatively young that you might find your own, Laura. Perhaps I envy Nabe, for I cannot simply blow people up for distracting me. That's yes. All. You have Night. Night. Wonderful. Love you too. Sorry about that. Hmm. What else? What else can we talk about? Hmm. Not that. Hmm. What about this? Your partner had a very specific attitude towards the things he treasured. Was this habitual for him? That would have been too much even for him. 
Don't get me wrong, he had a harsh temper. Like a true businessman, he was ready to burn his competitors to the ground. But oh. threatening someone physically would have been something new even for him, am I correct? Absolutely. Besides, I had never seen him this angry. The fellow who received the letter must have been extremely alarmed. <laughs> oh, yeah, I can believe that. Uh, okay, what else can we talk about? Traces near Remember the shed. Remember one of the rules? It uh, seems that you didn't return a tool. Is this knife yours? Do I look like a fellow who carries a knife? Okay, so that can't be you then. There are plenty of uses for it on the site, and outside of it. I have other people to cut ropes for me, Mr. Holmes. Okay, so it's not yours, then. The shed, Arthur said it's not his knife and that he doesn't use one in his work. Okay. Arthur was surprised to see a Theodore this aggressive and indiscreet. All right. Zoology. Okay, all the, hmm. Okay. Please go away. Please just go, go, go away. Go away. Hmm. Well, the animal, Gildan's of elephant course. is quite an unusual addition to Cordona's fauna. What is your scientific opinion on that? No matter how much Theodore loved it, it still remained a wild animal trapped inside a stone mm -hmm. pen. Goliath needs savannas, fields, lakes. I'm sure that Goliath did not have a plan to kill his owner to head to the savannas. What do you think? No, animals don't kill in a typical sense. I can only presume that it tried to protect itself from captivity, from Theodore. It was a gilded cage that was predestined mm. to break. The title of what we're currently doing. Arthur's believes that the elephant sought to free itself from captivity much like any other wild animal. Hmm. Okay. Photo of Imogen? Have you seen this person before? The one beside Imogen uh, Gildan? Girl. No, but he's with Imogen, so I suppose that he's a friend of hers. That girl always has her head in the clouds. I could have said Theodore was different, but that wouldn't have been entirely true. Away with the fairies, mm. was he? That's one way of putting it. Either way, I don't know much about Imogen's life or her friends. The type of elite that pretends to be educated. I keep getting notification that some, someone I know is playing a game. I guess I'm much like any other one. Hmm. Nothing to say about that. Okay, what about Did this? Did this plan cause a rift in your business relationship with Theodore Gildan? Nothing like that. Admittedly, we didn't share a common vision of what is more important, the past or the future. In mm. my opinion, we can't build a future without knowing the past. So you wanted That's to true. save the tomb of Vitus here, or perhaps your control over the research? Only the knowledge that rightly belongs to humankind, nothing less and nothing more. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Let's see, is there anything else we can talk about? Okay. I forgot I left some stones unturned. I have to leave. Okay. Hmm. Yep. Okay, so found out, I guess, what we needed to find out. I guess we don't do anything else. Hmm. All right. Uh. Okay, let's move on then. Can't change clothes here. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh. Yeah, there's Mind Palace stuff that we could do. Um. Sure. You know what? Why not? Let's let's do some Mind Palace stuff. Okay. Everyone blames Goliath. That does seem to be the case. What about this detail, though? I need to find Goliath. Goliath is dangerous right now, but may pr prove valuable in this case. I need to lure him out by exploiting his lust. Oh. 
Do we indeed? I've seen fabric in the dig site. The foghorn from the boat workshop can attract or deter large vessels. It may be of help. The perfume from Theodore's office can help if I extract pheromones from it. Oh. Okay. Well, we know this and this. That's correct. Theodore attempted to destroy Paul. Theodore Gilden was highly motivated to destroy Paul's career and well-being, even going as far as to hire criminals. That we definitely know. Hmm. Well, we know there's damage to the shed, not the fatal battering. So, definitely not that. Hmm. Well, I mean, Paul had a fresh bruise. There was someone there. Paul's elbow injury may have been sustained by falling on Theodore. That's possible. Or it is, that is actually the case. Okay. We do have to try in time since the partnership ended. Arthur protected his research. Arthur Swift has dedicated his life to studying the history of humankind. He may not have been willing to see that end. I don't think he's the suspect though. I really don't think he's the suspect. Hmm. Damage to the shit? Arthur may have fallen on the shit. Arthur may have... I don't think that's the case, though. Oh. Hmm. may have been at the crime scene, or Paul may have been at the crime scene. I don't know. He may have been there. So that's possible. And we got it. Ooh, we can do a chemical analysis. Oh, God. I didn't like this the last time when I did it. Okay, let's see. Just Go there, you there, you there. You go up like that, and then we can link it up. Aha! Uh -huh. There we go, I figured it out. I've tracked pheromones from the liquid. Perfect! Fabric doll making, foghorn from the boat workshop. Okay. This fabric will work. So that we need to get, and then we need to go to the boat workshop. So, boat workshop, boat workshop. Hunting a Goliath. Key evidence collected. All right. It doesn't say all evidence has been collected. Then again, we don't have the foghorn. Key evidence has been collected from here. But we haven't collected everything. Okay, so we're now back at the boat club. Which is exactly where we go. Let's go get the foghorn. Which, if I remember correctly, he's still in there. Okay. It's in here, right here. It might fool an elephant. Mrs. Nini seemed to know us sewing inside out. Uh, I bet she missed us. I hope Miss Nini won't misunderstand me. All evidence collected. Did I just collect all evidence for the... I didn't collect all evidence for the... Hmm... What did I miss? At the archaeological dig site.
Okay, I'm so sorry about that long cut. I am so sorry about that. So let's see. Oh, I'm so sorry. Not this way. Just need these places other way. He's even been putting up posters. Poor man. Losing it may be the death of him. I don't know what that's about, but I'm not doing that right now. So, down this way. I'll do that probably in the next episode. Good day. I've come to you with a special requirement. The tailors on the street can't help me, I'm afraid. Could you make a doll for me? Oh, Senior Holmes. Hmm. You taught the police how to do their job, and they found the thief. Of course I will help you. But what sort of doll? A child's doll, such as my great niece might play with? Um, a no. little larger than your typical doll. Signore, I don't understand. Boy, girl, animal, and what color? Animal, um, a passionate, perhaps amorous animal. Ah, oh, Signore, you talk in readers. I am an old lady who's seen it all. Tell me what you need. <laughs> I need a life-size elephant. Yeah, I think Mrs. Nini outdid herself with this one. Is that a tail? That's a trunk, John, but I must agree with you. That it's a nasty <laughs> well, let's not waste any time. Okay, hunting Goliath. I can't wait to see the fruits of your labor. Oh, boy. All right. Okay. So with the magnificent elephant doll now in my possession, I should use the coal gas shed in Gildan's yard to inflate the lure. Oh. Okay, I see. So, Stonewood Manor. I don't know what I missed at the um, archaeological dig site. If I missed something. God, I really hope I didn't miss anything. I'm pissed if I did. Okay. The game is on. Yes, so it is. So what's the plan? I hope it all doesn't go horribly wrong. We know Hopefully that the elephant is seeking a female. We can arrange that. Mm -hmm. A doll with the appropriate scent might do miracles. So you're a marriage broker. <laughs> well, I suppose that makes me a groomsman. Oh, mm. She is a bit breezy, I must say. Well, Goliath is eager for a single female elephant in his area. Mm -hmm. It should be just enough for his taste. You'll need to trust me. Okay. Oh. Are we ready? I can't stand the tension. <laughs> We're ready. Let's call the elephant. Oh, boy. Okay. How could anyone resist? Hmm? Please show me a night I will never forget. I knew a lady once who said just that. No. Salacious trumpet. I told you you had a nice trunk. Would you hold it against me? Too bad I'm not an elephant. <laughs> Tempting trumpet. How do you feel about me? Why? Why do we have these? Take your time, Sherry. Am I supposed to do a proper order? That deserves a slap. And then a kiss. And here's our lovesick friend. Oh. No, I did it right. <gasps> oh. Is the meaning of this? Why are you bringing it here? I won't allow you to leave it. I assure you that it is only a temporary measure. It won't be long until the elephant is gone, I promise you. Hmm. I missed something here. I'm sorry, this is this is bothering me. This is actually really bothering me. 
What did I miss? With some ingenuity, I we have managed to lure the elephant out. Goliath found. I'm sorry, this is this is really bothering me. I, I need I need to controller please don't do that I need to go there sorry this is bothering me I need to see what I missed I don't know what I missed what's with this intricate recruitment process oh British workers oh this as a head of this organization I need to secure a productive environment it's impossible to do so if there are political differences especially here where the native population doesn't support our efforts to find the ancient artifacts. Decent pay can also stimulate productivity and shut down any political discord. Hadn't you thought of that? You're young. You have time to fritter and fight with everyone you meet. I don't have such a luxury. Our workers receive enough pay for what they do. So don't start a discussion you know nothing about. <laughs> There we go. That was the one thing I was missing. Arthur sincerely believes that the discoveries at the dig site will change humankind's understanding of their own history. Okay, that's the one thing. It was a discussion discussion point I did not have. That makes a lot of sense. Okay. That makes a lot of sense. I'm just stupid. Okay, well, let's let's go back on with the main quest that we were doing before i'm sorry that that really bothered me that was really really bothering me that i could not figure that out because i i didn't want to miss that that's that was a very important detail well semi-minor but still important in a way okay okay let's look at you oh Poor animal. It injured itself while running through the forest. Yep. Oh. Peaceful and compliant. Almost a gentleman. Mm hmm. The left tusk is larger and more worn. You're a left tusk elephant. Oh. I do see this as well. A dart. A feathered fletching. There's something in the needle. This what is in the what is in the needle? Dart found on the elephant. That changes things. There's a faint trace of an unknown substance in it. Ooh. And another chemical analysis. Okay, what are we trying to get? Negative three. Okay. Oh, I see. Wow, we got a lot to choose from now. Let's see, you need three, negative three. Hmm. us around a bit. So definitely chemical operations. We need two of those. So go there, you go there. You definitely go there. Just like that and then like that. There we go. It's that simple. There were traces of 
strychnine inside of it. The, this amount could kill a human, but was not enough to topple such a large animal. Said it most likely aggravated the elephant, causing a fit of rage and burst of strength. Arthur and Paul may have Arthur or Paul may have shot Goliath. Both Arthur Swift and Paul Perks had the means to shoot the elephant with the dart. Hardy tried to protect the poison dart. That doesn't really change either way. Goliath killed the. Oh, damn. I don't really. Goliath killed Th uh, Theodore. In a fit of rage, Goliath killed Theodore Gilden. After a quick one sided confrontation, the elephant fled, leaving Gilden to come to his injuries. Either execute Goliath or save Goliath. I don't want to kill the elephant. The captors are the ones responsible for his behavior. The elephant requires a new owner and home. Sorry, we're gonna s we're gonna save Goliath. Goliath doesn't belong in a cage. I'm sorry. That's just was the elephant shot before or after Theodore's death. And does it matter? It doesn't matter, in my opinion. It does not matter, in my opinion. Want to talk about the elephant in the yard? No, John. It really doesn't matter to me at this point. Do I go talk to someone or something? Do I talk? I, I talk to Imogen. I'm guess. I'm assuming I talk to Imogen. Okay. Well, let's go talk to her. Cause, wait. What did it say? With the, well, we decided to save the elephant. I'm not gonna kill the elephant. That's that is just cruel, and I'm not willing to do that. You were right about Goliath. You were right about Goliath. Everyone confirmed your opinion. They all agree that the beast is vicious. The animal wielded two tons of rage, and Mr. Gildon regrettably didn't stand a chance. The mating season only served to amplify its temper. Oh, spare me. That's a little too much detail, thank you. What is the point of this conclusion? How do you plan to use your findings? Get Goliath off the hook. Miss Gildon... I know how much you dislike the elephant. Rather more than dislike. I wish I could have done more to that wretch than just speak of it. But it's innocent. Goliath did not mm -hmm. intend to kill your father. It was provoked, scared, yeah. and in mating season. Your father took Goliath's normal state for granted, and in doing so made a mistake that caused the elephant to be aggressive. Stop it. I already know the answer. I don't need your moral perspective on this situation. I don't know why you wasted your time. I actually did more than you. Which involved what, Miss Gildon? A man with a big wallet made an offer to take the elephant away. I accepted it. I was so naive, thinking that it was me who was so helpless. But you are useless too. I am glad that the elephant is no longer of your concern, but I need to make sure. I don't care, and I don't want to listen. Animal advocate. God, I hope this doesn't get the elephant killed. Thought you wouldn't turn up. Why is that? I suppose it's the English way to leave without saying goodbye, but I never planned to abandon you. Because you brought the filthy beast here. Because you did nothing to ensure its proper punishment. I had to do everything, not you. I was piecing together your father's murder. There was nothing to piece together. I told you, it was Goliath. I never asked mm. you to talk with anyone. I asked you to find the stupid animal. Even if my efforts are invisible, that does not mean that I did nothing. I don't have the strength to argue. These are my father's belongings. They're about your mother. Take them all and leave me be. I won't waste your time any longer, Miss Gilden. Thank you for your help. Mm. Case complete. Well, it's finished. Belonged to my family. All I managed to get from our neighbor were a few objects Theodore had stored that are supposedly connected to my family. Miss Gilden left them on a bench near the entrance of a manor. Sounds absurd, but we caught a murderer and then released him. It was Goliath, and I'll admit I'm happy that the animal is free. 
As am I. I prefer the animal being free. Honestly. My mother always wore this around her neck until one day it disappeared. Oh. I was wondering where it went. She said it was a birthday present from a good friend. Well, we know where it went. Letter from Violet to Theodore Gilden. My dear Theodore, you know I value our friendship more than most other bonds. We share the same restless soul, and your acceptance and support in trying times has been a blessing. I'm endlessly grateful for my turn of fate that Sol, Sidger, and I joined the same expedition as you. It changed my life and for the better. Nevertheless, I am not blind, nor a hypocrite. I know that your feelings towards me have deepened. Forgive me, Theodore, but I do not feel as you do. I must spare you the pain of one-sided love before it's too late. Please see and close the necklace you so thoughtfully gifted in remembrance for our adventure together. I cannot good conscience continue to wear it. I know this letter recalls you such hurt, and for that I can but apologize deeply, yet my heart is for Sidger, who is still unaware of your desires. If this sees the end of our friendship, I will understand, but I truly hope we can continue to share the conversations, collaborations, and kindnesses that have brought me such joy all these years. Yours respectfully, Violet. Oh. Here we go again. Whoa. I just had another glimpse of a memory, John. It's fuzzy, but I'm sure it happens somewhere in the manor. Finally moving forward. Shall we go? Yes, we shall. And I am going to end this episode here. I hope y'all enjoyed this. This has been a long one. I am... We've pieced more puzzles. I uh, Pieces to the puzzle. So now we know a bit more. Uh, we got a fragmented memory. And... Uh, I mean, we solved the case. It was Goliath. Like, I didn't want to kill the animal. That would have that would not have sat right with me. But I hope you all enjoyed this. If you did, please leave a thumbs up, comment down below, and once you've done that, please hit the subscribe button and the bell to stay notified whenever a new video is uploaded. It would be greatly appreciated if you did. It brings a smile to my face to know that people enjoy the content that I upload. And you know, just, I in general, I just enjoy doing this. I'm looking forward to what the next case will be. We'll have to see what the next case will be. I have no idea yet. But, as always, hope everyone's doing well. I hope everyone's staying safe. Remember to be kind and know that you are not alone. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!